What's going on guys? John Alder here from CodingMe.com and in this video, we're going to build our profile list page for our Twitter clone app with Django and Python. All right guys, like I said, in this video, we're going to build our profile list page for our Twitter app. But before we get started, if you like this video and want to see more like it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and be sure to check out CodingMe.com. Super quick announcement, that coupon code I mentioned last week at the end of the year is still valid. I went ahead and extended it. A bunch of you guys have been emailing me. It was supposed to expire January 1st, but like I said, a ton of you guys emailed me and said, hey, I missed it. I'm changing CodingMe.com membership prices in the new year to a monthly and yearly membership fee, but you can lock in the lifetime membership right now with this special coupon code. Normally, lifetime total membership is $198. In the new year, 2023, that's going up to $249, or you could do monthly or you can do yearly. But if you use coupon code 2022, click that button, type in 2022, click apply. Boom. It goes down to $49. That's a one-time fee. It's not monthly. It's not yearly. For life, you get all my courses. You also get all my future courses at no additional charge. They just pop up in your account as soon as I release them. So grab that if you're interested. That will expire the 7th of January, 2023. So this coupon code is only going to be here for a couple more days. I've extended it a week. I'm not going to extend it anymore after that. So if you're interested, grab that right now. Okay. Like I said, in this video, we're going to create our profile list page. And this is just a basic page that lists all the people that are currently signed up. Now, in the future, we may refine that to just show people you are following. But for now, we're just going to have it show all of the profiles, all the users that we have on our site. And you see for now, we've got this little sort of dummy picture here, this default picture of a, a user. In the future, we'll make it so people can upload their own image. But for now, or if a person hasn't uploaded an image, we're just going to use this dummy thing. So we're going to set all this up. These are clickable. We'll probably do that in the next video, but for now we'll get all this going. So let's head over to our code. I'm using the sublime text editor and the Git bash terminal as always. And as always, you can find a link to the code in the pinned comment section below, as well as a link to the playlist with all the other videos in this Twitter clone series. So check that out if you haven't so far. Okay. So first things first, let's just create a basic page for our profile list. So let's start by heading over to our urls.py file. And we have two of those. So we want to make sure it's the one in our musker directory. And let's create a new path. So let's go path. And I want to call this profile underscore list. That'll be the URL. And this is going to point to the profile underscore list view that we haven't created yet. So let me copy this. And let's give this a name of profile underscore list. And we'll use that to create links and whatnot. So, okay, that looks good. Go ahead and save that. Now let's head over to reviews.py file and let's create just a basic function for that page. So I want to pass in our request as always. And just for now, let's return render request. And then let's create a page called profile underscore list dot HTML. Now we haven't created that page yet. So the next step is to create that page. So let's save this page, head over to our templates, right click and create a new file and let's go file save as, and we want to save this as profile underscore list dot HTML. So Boom. There we go. Now we can open up our home.html and grab this code and just sort of paste it in. So we want to extend our base and here let's say profile list, something like that, right? Okay. So let's save that and head back over to our terminal and run our server. And we get an error profile list is oops, typo. Uh, head back over to our urls.py file. This should be views dot profile list. All right. Go ahead and save that. Head back over here break out of here, run this guy again. Okay. That looks good. So we can head back over to our website here and there we go. So make sure also that you are logged into your admin area for this next little section we're going to talk about here. Okay. So that looks okay. But now if we go to profile underscore list, just to make sure it shows up. So, all right, let's create a link up here in the nav bar that points to this page. So we can go over to our templates nav bar and scroll down to this link and let's say profile list or something like that. And inside of here, let's create a Django URL and this is going to be a URL and we want it to point to profile underscore list. There we go. And that might be a little hard to read. So we can put it on its own line here and okay, that looks good. Go ahead and save this, head back over to the website, make sure that worked real quick. Hit reload. Boom. Now we can toggle back and forth. Okay. So far, so good. We've got our page. That was super simple. Now we want to query the database and put all the users up on the screen. So how do we do that? Well, 
Let's head back over to our code, hit up our views.py file, and inside of this guy, let's create a variable called profiles. And that's going to be a profile.objects. And then I don't think I want my own profile to be in this list because I already know I exist. So let's exclude the user of request.user. Right? So this will give us a list of all the other users. Now we could just pass that into our page. And we'll do that in the normal way by passing profiles, colon profiles. Okay. Okay, so now we can head over to that page in our templates file or program underscore list. And let's add this stuff in. So let me put a little line break here. And let's create an if statement real quick. And let's say if profiles. Now there's almost always gonna be profiles. But if you haven't signed up anybody yet, we need to sort of error handle for that. I mean, it's kind of silly, let's say end if here. Uh, but if there is profiles, let's create a for loop and loop through them. All right, so let's say for profile in profiles. And what do we want to list? Let's list the profile dot user dot username. And I don't know, let's do this twice. And for now, let's say username. And then I don't know, let's say link, there won't be a link yet. Let's do this a second time and put a little at sign in front of it, right? And we want to make sure this is lowercase so I can pass in this bar and then the word lower and that'll make sure it's lowercase. So, okay, uh, let's put a couple of line breaks here between each one just to make sure that's looking okay. And all right, that looks good. Now this is kind of weird. Let's tab this back a bit. All right, so let's save this, head back over to the website, see if we messed that up. We did. Oh, forgot my second end if. That's why I always, as soon as I create a four, or in four, I should say, whenever you create a four or an if, I always end it right away. Otherwise, I forget, like I just did. So let's say end four. All right, save this, head back over here, give it another try. And boom, we get an error. I have on fire today. So let's head back over to reviews.py file. And up here, we forgot to import profile this guy. So up here, let's go from dot models, import profile. All right. That should do the trick head back over here, hit reload and boom. Now we have user April link at April and all oh, this is all on one line. That's no good. Let's head back over here and put a little line break. Okay. So so far, that's working, but it's kind of boring, we might want a little bit more information. So let's add a a date modified so we can see, hey, did this person recently update something or did they recently tweet or whatever? What's the current status of these people? So we can do that really easily. Let's head back over to our code and let's go over to our models.py file. And inside of our profile here, let's add another line of code here to determine when the last time they modified their data. So let's say date underscore modified. And let's set that equal to models.date time field. And then we want this to be on our user. And let's set our auto underscore now to true. So this will give us the most current stuff here. And date time field that looks good. Alright, so let's save this. But now this is a major change to the database to the model. So we need to remigrate this guy. So let's head back over to our terminal. Control C to break out of here. And let's go Python manage.py make migrations. Okay, we can see that's been added. And then let's go Python manage.py migrate. Okay, finally, let's go Python manage.py run server. All right, so now we're running again. Now let's add that to this page right here. So back over to our code. And let's hit our profile list page and underneath here, Let's add another line break. Let's say last updated. And then go profile dot date underscore modified. That should do the trick here. Let's go ahead and save this head back over here. Hit reload. Alright, so January fourth is the last date modified because 
we just added this field. So it's just going to give that to everybody right now. But if we say make a change to April and it was 5.54 p.m., which and it is not 5.54 p.m. right now, but whatever. Uh, let's head back over here, open another link and go to our admin section, click on users. And let's see, April, let's have April follow admin. So we save that. That's something that's changed. Now, if we hit reload, it says 5.55 last updated instead of 5.54. So, okay, that seems to work. But this looks pretty boring. We need to spice this up a bit and uh, add some formatting and put that little image that, uh, you know, little image of a user on there. So how do we do that? Well, let's head over to get bootstrap and click on docs and then scroll down to components and cards. And here's a bunch of cards we can use. I'm going to scroll all the way down, 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 <laughs> down, down, still going, still going. Okay. This one, this one looks good. I'm going to go ahead and copy this guy and let's head back over to our code and let's just paste this in. Okay. And then underneath this, let's add a couple of line breaks. And then we can just come in here and change this however we want. So let's grab this guy. And instead of a card title, let's get rid of that. Well, hold on. Let's look at this again. Yeah, card title. That's going to be bold, sort of. I'm going to paste that in there and then paste it in again right here and put a little at sign in front of it and then do a couple of line breaks, something like that. And grab this thing and paste it right there. And then we can get rid of all this stuff, save this, head back over here, hit reload. Okay, looking better. Now in the future, we'll make this little guy right here clickable, but I'm noticing here, this should be lowercase. So did I mess that up somewhere? Oh, no, just goes right here, lower. I thought we did that, but now we hit reload. Okay, now it's lowercase. I like that better. And you see this last updated thing? It's kind of muted. That looks good. Okay, so now we need this picture guy right here. So you'll be able to find this image on my GitHub. As soon as I push this code, you can go check it out and save it there and use it. I've just got it saved on my computer and I've just got it right here. If you double click this, there it is. But we need to add this to our website and I'm going to stick it in a static folder. That's sort of just how Django works. So inside of our Musker directory, I'm going to right click here and create new folder and I'm going to name it static. Hit enter and boom, there it is. Now inside of here, I'm going to create another folder and I'm going to call it images. Boom. There we go. So now I need to add that image to that folder. So I'm going to come over here. I'm going to right click and copy, and then I'm just going to navigate to that folder. Here it is static images, right click and paste this guy in there. Now I'm going to come back over here. There it is. So to use static things in Django, we need to make a little bit of a change to our profile list page here at the top. We need to add a static tag. So we, we need to say load static, all right? So that will load all the stuff out of this directory here. And to use it, we just come down here to wherever we want to use it right here is the IMG SRC tag. And we just create a static tag. So that's just static and then whatever we want to use. So we want inside of our static directory, we want to use the images directory and then the name of that file, which is default underscore profile underscore pick dot PNG. Okay. And here we can see profile image or something, whatever. So, okay, let's save this head back over here and you may have to restart your server. Yeah, that didn't seem to be working. Let's head back over here, restart our server. Come back, hit reload, and boom, there we go. Okay, looking good so far. Now, one last thing, if we log out, so let's go to our admin area and log out. 
Now we head back over to our website and we click this link, we're gonna get an error. Why? Because, let's head back over to our code and I'll show you. When we made this query to the database, we're saying, hey, exclude the current user, right? Well, if you're not logged in, there is no current user. So this is a problem. So we need to change this around a little bit to make sure there's somebody logged in in order to see this page. So super easy, we can go if request.user.is underscore authenticated, then do this. There we go. Else, we want to return render request, and then let's just send this guy back to the home page. And let's also add a little message, a little error message. So let's go messages.success and pass in a request. And inside of here, let's say you must be logged in to view this page, dot, dot, dot. And since we're gonna use that message, let's instead just return redirect to our homepage. Now we need to import some things in order to use messages and redirect. So let's do that up here at the top. So we want to import redirect there. We also want to from django.contrib, we wanna import messages. And in order to have the actual message pop up on the screen, we need to, we need to make a quick change to our base.html file. So let's head over to our templates and our base.html file. And let's come down here to right underneath our nav bar. And let's put this right here. And let's say, if messages, and we learned our lesson before to end our if right away, we want to create a for loop. So let's go, so let's say for message in messages. And again, <laughs> we want to, and our for loop. And inside of here, let's use some bootstrap to put a little message box thing. So here, let's go to alerts and just find one we like. I like this yellow one. This is a warning alert. So we come down here and look for warning. There it is. But I also want a little check box. So if we come down here, scroll down, scroll down. Okay, here's one with a little check box that will disappear. I like that. Let's just grab this code, head back over here. And we just paste this in. Kind of tab it over a little bit. And instead of it saying all of this, we just want to type in our message. Okay, so that should work. Let's go ahead and save this head back over here and try this again. Hit reload. And boom, you must be logged in to view this page and it's sent us back to the home page. Very cool. Now, if we come back here and log in, and then go back to the home page and then click here, boom, it shows the profile list. Very cool. Okay, so we are moving right along. In the next video, we'll create actual profile pages for individuals. So we can click on each profile and go to their page and then follow or unfollow them, and get into all that good stuff. So that should be fun. But for now, we are moving right along. So that's all for this video. If you liked it, be sure to smash the like button below, subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm and check out codemy.com where you can use coupon code 2022 just for the next few days and get total membership for just $49. That's access to all my courses, over 50 courses, thousands of videos and the PDFs of all my best selling coding books. Join over 150,000 students learn to code just like you. My name is John Alder from CodeMe.com and I'll see you in the next video.